Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Peter and today I want to talk about we should acknowledge that we only want to be seen as good persons or see ourselves as good people, persons, persona, the facade of our existence. We'll go into that but first I want to give you a proper greeting. I get somebody down, Aum Shanti, peace to you, peace to me. Yes, we should acknowledge that we only want to see ourselves as good persons. So what does good mean exactly? What does good mean? Righteous. Righteous, does it mean righteous, good? What is bad? What is bad? Would you prefer someone to call you a good person or a natural person? You, well, they're so natural, look at them. They, they just do everything so naturally. Or they, they're so good, they do everything is so good. Can you see the difference in that, those two things? Is the word good loaded with preconceptions and old emotions and feelings and thoughts that we've had about what is good, what is bad? And natural is starting to become the same way where the, the destruction of paganism, paganism, i.e. I, loving nature, loving yourself, being part of that symbiotic position that you're in as a human being. Is that a good position or a bad position? Some people would say it's bad. And then you've got all the rituals that go around that. All these things, the, the rituals that go around all of these things, like paganism or Christianity or Judaism or Islam. It's all rituals, rituals, rituals. But you look at the, the whole ethos of all of it, it's all about self-awareness and getting yourself into a more natural position with your natural essence, the real essence inside of you in the Tao philosophy they call it polishing the diamond. In Islam I believe they call it polishing the mirror. Polishing the mirror. Christianity is igniting the Christ spark inside of you. Christos, the Christ, the original Gnostics said it's the Christos inside of you, the Christ spark. It's all of this, that's you becoming more natural with yourself. So you can look at all of this and you see your preconceptions that are loaded onto you, loaded onto you between the age of about two and seven. You've got five years where you're in theta mode, just putting anything you want in your mouth, taking in information so that you can learn how to exist in this society that we live in. And you get your preconceptions of good and bad then. And some of them can be conditioned wrongly into you. That's like 95% of your brain activity is your subconscious. So, and a lot of that is coming between those ages of two and seven. So the word good will be rammed in there somewhere and you'll have so many different connotations to the word good. It could, could mean saintly to you, which is a different thing. It's not good, it's saintly. It could mean you, you're a vegan. It's not, it's not mean you, you're good, it means you're a vegan. It could mean that you help other people. That doesn't mean that you're good, it means you're helping other people. So there's all these different things that are put to the word good. So helping other people might be a bad thing because they might need to be able, they might need to have to learn to help themselves. So if you keep helping them, you're not helping them. You're actually hindering them because they need to get out there and help themselves. Really important thing. So that might not be a good thing. You see what I mean? There's whole different connotations to us looking at ourselves as a good human being but we all want to see ourselves as a good human being and yet we all do bad things we all do bad things all of us are guilty of doing bad things to each other to nature to our environment to our society all of us have done bad things all of us We're not one of us and it doesn't mean you're a sinner <laughs> doesn't mean you're a bad person if you can start to live in a more natural way where you see everything for the first time do you remember that black crow song i don't suppose many people would do but it's, it's like a, on one of their albums a black crow song it, it sounds like an old gospel song where you're saying you're opening your eyes and you're seeing things for the first time now listening to such guru that's how he says he sees everything for the first time always interacting with even people or environments he's been there 
many times, he's always looking at it as if he's looking at it from the first time in his life. So therefore he'll see something different in it every time that he goes there. So there's no room for boredom. And that's a good thing. Well, that's a natural, I should say, natural rather than good. That's a natural way of actually being rather than living with the laziness of the subconscious mind of looking at it, oh, I've done this before. And then your ego's happy. Your ego's happy because you realize, oh, I don't have to prove myself here. Well, I've done this before. So if you go into something that, and you're looking at something for new for the first time, your ego starts to twitch. <laughs> I need to get it there. I need to get some recognition and get some proof here. Or you get go the other way, you become too excluded from it. And oh no, this is too scary, I can't do that, which is your self-esteem pulling you back because the preconceptions are weighing you down that you can't actually push yourself through that. So your ego's been pushed to the back, your self-esteem drops, and you, you feel like you can't do anything that's new in front of you. So you've got this battle inside of you that's saying you're a good person but really you should be looking at things in a fresh way all the time which becomes a natural person or a, not even a natural human being. Being, we are being, we're not a person, persona, persona is like a facade, that's what it means, persona, it's facade, it's like the straw man when you get a credit card bill or a bank bill, your, your name is in capital letters and that's your straw man, that's what's been created in, your, in our societies today to say that this is your straw man, this is your legal fiction, this is how we set up our legal society and you need to be associated with the straw man for you to be in this society is getting worse and worse now and therefore it's broken away from common law or natural law and you can see that at the Magna Carta memorial place where it says the American Bar Association says in two plaques I think 1980 and 1990 says it adheres to the Great Charter adheres i.e. sticks to abides with is alongside or working with the Great Charter, the Magna Carta, the Common Law, or the Natural Law of the Land. And then on 2000, the, the American Bar Association recognises the Great Charter. Big difference, I recognise that. It doesn't mean I'm going to go along with it. It adheres to it means I'm going to go along with it. Recognise it. See what I mean? It's the big breakaway. And do the American Bar Association Assume that they're good. Well, we're doing a good thing for society. We're helping you with your legal stuff. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I think that's all a big facade, a big illusion placed over your eyes. And I'm not knocking any solicitors. I've had some amazing conversations with solicitors about the law, the legal side, the lawful side. And it is eye-opening how it actually all works. And you can open up some of their eyes and, and they'll start to go oh my goodness me I didn't see it that way because it's all we, we kind of rolled into this I'm a good person I'm doing good things so therefore there's nothing to question yeah see how it works I'm a good person that I do good things there's nothing that I don't need to question anything of course you need to question everything question everything why shouldn't you question everything if you start to question everything you start to question actually how the society is built up and uh, I'm writing a book at the moment. And it was the first time I was taxed. <laughs> so there's me, this bubbly little 18 year old, learning how to be a printer. I was just racking at the time, racking prints from the, the screen print machine, where the printer was actually printing. And I was getting paid, we got paid in cash, we had a little brown envelope, we got paid in cash with that. And I remember, the first time when my cash was short, not because I, I was sick or a day off or anything like that, it, it was short and I, and, I, and I didn't even bother looking at a little slip that used to come in with the, with the money and walk straight into the director's office and said, where's my money? Why is my money short? And they said, well, you're, you, it's tax, it's tax, you're being taxed. So I said, what am I being taxed for? Oh, to, to pay for society. So well, what, what if I don't want to pay for the society? What if I think it's all wrong? Well, no, you have no choice. What do you mean I've got no choice? This is outrageous. You can't just come in here into my waste packet, take energy from me, tax, put them, and give it to something that I don't actually consent to. And yet I was looked at really, really strange. And 
as a bad person for having that opinion of being so naive about the society that you have to consent you have to <laughs> which is an oxymoron your consent should be given freely not having to consent to something really important for you to get that and that doesn't make you a bad person or a good person it's natural because you're going whoa hang on a minute this is what is this all about and that's what's happened with our society today so we've been fooled of thinking we are good people and it's acknowledging that you only want to see yourself as a good person when there's lots of different avenues and nuances and wonderful experiences you can have when you become a natural person. You can do it through Qigong, it's all free on this channel, so give it a go if you can. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Sarang Hamid.